G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, yes, this one is a very special one because uh, this is the guy that I know a lot of you guys wanted and uh, sort of asked, did you want one of these? And I got a big response about it. So uh, this is the guide on how to build the uh, the Helix from Impulse RC. So this is an absolutely insane quadcopter. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite as cool as this one. I, I am in love with this quad. So what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be sticking it on the bench and I'll show you exactly what you need to put in the kit. And then we'll go through the step-by-step -step process to take it from the kit, which uh, you know, that you guys have, to uh, turning it into one of these race-winning monsters right here. So uh, if you're sort of new to the hobby or if you've just got one of these kits stick around because this is definitely uh going to be one build that you're going to want to watch and it's probably one too it took me a little while to get the, get some things around here because there are some things you need to be wary of or some little things that you want to make sure you put in the right way first so anyway i'm going to stop rambling we'll stick it on the bench uh, i'll show you what you need and the parts that we're going to be using and uh let's get started on building this thing and just one quick thing, the awesome about this this kit is it, it comes with so much stuff that you already need, so there's barely any extra components you have to do. Anyway, let's stop rambling and let's get started with the build. Right here, so let's have a look at everything we're going to actually need. Now, uh, the awesome thing about the Helix kit is uh, not only is it one of the simplest quadcopters to build and also the best, uh, but it comes with so much of the stuff already. So you're already going to have your Helix kit with a flight controller, PDB, an OSD VTX right here, some LEDs, and so these are the things you're going to have to add as well. So you're still going to have to track down four motors, uh, So I'm, and I'll leave a link to all the parts that I'm using down in the description. So you're still going to need to track down four motors, four ESCs, you're going to need to get yourself uh, a receiver for whatever radio you're using, your FPV camera, and also uh, your FPV antenna. Now we're also going to use some little things like some zip ties and some heat shrink and some other little uh, bits and bobs throughout the build as well, but there are very, very minor pieces. Anyway, so what this video is going to do, it's going to allow you to take this and turn it into this. Now, uh, a very, very cool quadcopter kit indeed. So what we're going to do, let's not waste any more time, let's jump in and get started, and we're going to be working on the arms. Alrighty, now the arms are probably the, I think these are probably the most difficult part of the build because you do have to get some things right with some wire lengths and things like that. So essentially what we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be using the arm, the ESC fairing, the motor and the ESC and we're going to be putting that all together so it's in one nice little package just like this one. So I'm going to be showing you how to make some of these. Uh, so what we need to do, we need to take our arm and you'll notice that uh, one side has sort of been sort of smoothed off uh, like this side here and one side is I guess a bit sharper. We want the smooth side facing upwards because that's the part that our motor is going to uh, be stacking to. And essentially what we're going to do, we're going to be threading our motor, oh, excuse me, we're going to be taking our motor, threading these wires through this little hole right here. They're going to run down, um, hopefully you can see a bit better, they're going to run down here, connect up to our ESC and uh, this ESC fairing is going to fit here and protect it just like that. So let's get started on that and the first thing we need to do is uh, to prepare our motor. Now to prepare our motor what we actually need to do because you actually have to bend it through the top of this little hole right here uh, we really want to get rid of this little bit of heat shrink on the outside here. Now I've chosen to use some Emacs motors uh, they're a very very I guess common good quality motor but uh Pretty much any of the ones with the new N52 magnets will be suitable for this, and these are 22 size motors. So, uh, but Emacs are very tried and trusted motors, so are uh, a fantastic choice. Now, what we really need to do, we need to peel this off. Now, if you are going to cut this, uh, definitely make sure you're not cutting some of the wires underneath, so it can be a little bit of a, uh, I guess, not dicey, but just make sure you're being careful not to cut any of the wires underneath because that could lead to some unwanted shorts. And then once you've cut enough of it, it should uh, should easily slide right off. Here we go. Let's see, see if maybe I have to cut it a little bit more. There we go. So uh, that's the first step that you're going to need to do. So to make sure you get off that heat shrink, and that's going to enable these wires to bend a lot easier when it comes to wrapping around the arm itself through that little hole. Now the next step, we actually need to, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be cutting and uh, tinning our wires so they're ready to solder up to our ESCs. Now there's actually a very specific length with these wires. Uh, we need them to be about 54 millimeters. So I've got my little, uh, and that's from this little middle, the middle bolt right here, the middle of the shaft heading out. We want them to be about 50, 54 millimeters is probably the give or take a millimeter. So there we go, let's put, there we go. So we're on 54 millimeters. So uh, it's heading out right there. So that's where I'm going to be cutting mine. So I'm gonna cut those now. 
And by doing it this way, uh, you're actually going to save a lot of time. I actually saw this video by this guy called Crazy FPV, and uh, he was talking about it, and he's actually already figured out the length. So uh, I've done some test ones, and yeah, 54 millimeters is the perfect length that uh, I've found when using these Emacs motors. So then all we simply do, we just strip the ends, because that's going to uh, allow us to pre-tin it. And now what we need to do, we're going to hit these with a little bit of solder to make sure that it's very, very easy when it wants to join up to our ESC. So let's do that now. Turn on our soldering iron and do that. Now all we need to do is just uh, tin them up. So a little bit of uh, solder on the soldering iron, heating it up and adding a little bit of solder just there. That's going to make it a lot easier when it comes time to joining them to our ESCs. There we go. Simple as that. Alrighty, so now our motors are ready. What we want to do, we actually want to slide them through the top of our the little hole right here. And uh, we're going to just get the wire used to bending around for when we solder it later on. So I'm going to line it up with the holes and I'm just going to bend it down because that's what's going to have to happen in our build. And it's going to be much easier to press it into place now uh, rather than later on when we're trying to fit the ESC fairing. So that's on there. That's looking all nice, uh, ready to be soldered up. So let's jump over and look at what we need to do on our ESC side of things. Alrighty, so the ESCs I've got are these DYS XS 30 amp ESCs. And I think it's important to go 30 amps on a build like this because it is going to be uh, insanely fast. Uh, and I really recommend people get B or Heli S ESCs. Now the one issue I do have with these ESCs and these fairings because essentially what our ESC is going to do, it's going to fit just inside here. But these ESCs aren't going to fit too easily because of the way this white motor wire is coming out. So uh, you really need to make sure that whatever ESCs you actually do get, uh, that they're going to fit inside this little cavity space inside here in the ESC fairing. Now these ones do fit I guess okay. It's not perfect but uh, with a little mods I think it's going to be fine. So all I have to simply do I'm going to take off the heat shrink out here and just reroute this wire so it goes up the board instead of coming straight out and that's going to allow it to fit a lot better. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to cut off the heat shrink and uh, do that. Alrighty, now that that's done, what we need to do, we need to add a little bit of solder on these pads just on the outside, and that's going to enable our motor wires to join up very, very easily. So uh, we're going to add that right now. Alrighty. Now the next step, and it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. What we need to do, we're going to uh, solder up our three wires that we have coming from our motors to uh, these three these three pads on here. Don't worry about the direction or which, uh, which way the motor's going to spin because we can change that all in the software at the end. So we'll simply uh, solder these up right now. And you can see because it had that, because it was pre-tinned before and we've uh, put the solder on there, it really, really joins up easily. You don't need any extra solder or anything like that. These are on there all nice and they are good to go. Alrighty, now the next thing we want to do, I'm actually going to slide this little bit of heat shrink down here and that's going to help to hold, uh, get this blue tack off it, that's going to help to hold this uh, little heat shrink on just here and that's the reason why I like these DYS uh, BOHELI SESCs is because they come with these e easy solder pads and also uh, a little bit of heat shrink so that's a nice little touch but they are a little bit different. If you didn't want to use these ones feel free to use something like the uh, Acheon ESCs or something like that. So I'm going to uh, go and heat this up now and then we'll pop back and we'll put it into our ESC fair. Alrighty, so you can see I've got my heat shrink on just here and now it's probably for the tricky bit or uh, what I think is the trickiest bit anyway. And look, this is going to be more difficult, less difficult depending on what type of ESC that you're using. So I know mine is a little bit of a tight fit, uh, but if you've got some of the other ESCs, they might fit a little bit better or you might have things a little bit tougher, who knows. Anyway, so what we need to do, uh, first I'm going to trim the end of this ESC wire because I don't need to worry about that. So we'll trim that. And essentially we need to feed our ESC uh, the wires out through this end because of your ESC fairing because that's where they're going to sort of be running out connecting to your board So we'll put those through right now There's one and you really want to try and keep them nice and straight uh, So they come out the order that you put them in so the order that they're on here, and then there's my red wire and my Ground Right here, now we're going to feed this into here, and this is where it gets a little bit, a little bit tricky, uh, depending on the size of your ESC. Now, 
essentially what's going to happen is that this is going to fit nicely into here and we're going to need to push our motor bolts all the way through this in here and into our motor so uh it's going to take a little bit of jigging but uh you can pull gently on these to sort of make sure your esc gets there in place uh and depending on the size of your ESC, like I said before, sometimes it's going to fit, sometimes it's going to take a little bit of work to get it in. So uh, what I'm going to do, instead of watch me struggling with this, I'm going to cut to uh, one that I've got finished. So I'll show you that now. So three, two, one, boop. Rightio, so the, there it is. You can see my ESC is in here uh, and that's looking nice and honky-dory. So what you need to do, let's go ahead and make four of these. Right here, so my four arms are done, so what we're going to do, we're going to put those to the side, and now we're going to work on some of the exciting bits, because that's probably the hardest part done, those arms, and now let's jump in and have a look at our flight controller PDB. Now this is a pretty cool little PDB flight controller, because it's going to allow us to hook up all these ESCs on the arms that we've just made and power our motors. We're going to be hooking up our buzzer and also our battery lead, um, and then hooking up to the flight controller side of things, we're going to be putting our receiver and our LEDs in here as well. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually mount it to this bit of carbon, so this bit of the frame. Now to mount this and make sure that it fits right, what I want you to do, you've got four very long bolts uh, inside your little kit. I want you to get those out and push them through these middle holes right here because that's gonna align, allow us to align our flight controller. So let's put those through right now. They don't have to be screwed down or anything. Um, and then you're gonna get these four little pieces here. So these are the fatter standoff pieces. So we're gonna be sliding those over the top. So uh, let's do that now, we'll put those four pieces on. Alrighty, so that's looking good. And then uh, what I recommend people do, you're gonna get some of these little silver nuts and we're just gonna screw these down and uh, put those, in. don't have to go down too tight, but that's simply, we're gonna use these later in our VTX, but we're simply gonna do that so we can hold these in place. So, uh, cause we're gonna be working on this for a little bit. So uh, let's screw all these down. Now you notice there is a bit of a difference on this plate. These two holes here at the front, they're going to be at the front of your flight controller or I guess the front of your craft and the ones at the smaller holes just here are at the back. Don't get it confused with this one which has a little slit in here because uh, we're gonna be using this one later. So anyway, what we need to do first, we need to actually stick our flight controller on here. So you're gonna get one of these uh, and this is sort of like your soft sticky pad. What I recommend to do, we're gonna peel it off. So let's do that now, peel off one side, whatever side comes off easiest, I guess. So let's let's do that. Do that now, and then we're going to sit our flight controller perfectly on here. So that's all peeled off. Oh, don't want it sticking there. And we're going to be sitting it on here. Make oh, this is a little bit tricky actually. Make sure you want to line it up correctly the first time. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, and then what you can do, we can simply peel off the underside. Once you've given it a bit of a press, I guess. Right, and we also need to get this part out as well. Made a little bit of a mistake here. Do, actually, what you wanna do, you do wanna take out this middle part though. So uh, don't pull, just pull off the outside part. So in my haste, I sort of stuck that down. But uh, what you wanna do, you wanna make sure you've just got that outside part on there. So don't pull off the sticky part for that. We'll save that for later actually. Alrighty, and now once you've got that, you should simply have that little sticky part on just there. We're going to slide it down and making sure that these two holes right here go towards the back. So the reason we put this on here is because it will simply slide over the top. It should be uh, lined up nicely and then you can just press it down. Right, so now that's on here, what we're going to do, we're going to go around and we're going to just tin up our pads just here. So we're going to tin up and that means just by putting a bit of solder on here. And just like we did with our ESC pads, that's going to make it very easy to do our future join. So I'm going to go around and do that now. Now just some little uh, pointers just in here. I haven't done my XT60 connector yet or where I'm going to do my battery lead because I'm going to poke some wires through and solder those up. And also this little part up here, you've got a little bridging part. So you can either choose if you bridge the two, there's this little tiny little part just here, a three volt, a space, and then a five volt. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bridge this middle pad and the five volt pad, and that's going to allow me to have some five volt output for my receiver. So if you wanted to have three volt, you'd bridge the other side. 
Okie dokie, so that's all nice and pre-tinned and what we're going to be doing now, I'm going to be hooking up my receiver. So I'm using the XSR because I fly with the Terenus, but um, just make sure whatever you use, you're choosing the correct voltage. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to hook those up to these little tabs right here. So you've got the signal on this part just here, then you've got the positive and the ground on the outside. And uh, if you want to use your UR or your smart port, that's just going to TX1, which is uh, right there sort of in the middle. So I'm going to hook those up now and all I've done, just like before, I've simply cut and pre-tinned these wires and now I'm going to solder them up. Okie dokie, so that's done now. So that's going to be uh, able to hook up to our XSR. And now I'm here, I'm going to install my buzzer and that's really simple. That's going to go in this nice little cutout right here. And you notice one is longer than the other on the buzzers right there. So one of the little, uh, one of the little leads is longer. So that is your positive. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to trim that up and shorten those just a, just a tad. And then uh, solder that in. And that's going to be a very, very simple job. Simply going to sit it on there and heat it up. So that's, uh, that's how my buzzer is going to go in. Alrighty, and now it's time to put in our XT60. Now, uh, when you're putting in the XT60 connector, if you don't know how to make these, I'm going to leave a link to a little soldering tutorial, and I'll put that in a link somewhere just up here. But uh, very, very simple, and now we're going to simply slide it in, and we're going to put it in this part of the board. So we're going to put it in here, and I'm going to solder those up just like that. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky to film, so what I'm actually probably going to do is cut to the finalized shot. So let's have a look at that in three, two, one, boop. Alrighty, so I've got my XT60 connecting in there uh, and that's why I didn't solder that up to the end So I had to put it through and then just solder it in but that's looking nice. I think it's now time uh, Let's actually start hooking up our arms and our ESCs All right now the first thing we need to do we actually need to get these little uh, I don't know what the actual name of these little bolts is But they, I think they sort of they're gonna go in here But what we need to do we need to actually tighten them down in there first and the way you do that I think they might be called press nuts. I'm not not hundred percent sure actually anyway So we're gonna simply put them on the top there and we're going to screw in something from the bottom and uh, eventually that's going to tighten and that should pull that down into here and it should make it a very very snug little fit so let's do that now and you can see it's going to be fairly stiff but it'll pull it down all right so that's been pulled right down into the carbon and now I'm simply going to unscrew it and that nut should stay there Dokey. So there's one side done. Let's do that to the other side. So that is nice and snug in there. So those two bolts are in there. And while we're here, we can take out these uh, these middle parts as well. So we'll take out these. Right, so now it's time to put our arms on. What we're going to do, all you're simply going to do is get this plate here and pretty much sandwich, uh, using just the middle the middle bolt right here, sandwich your arm between those two. So very, very simple. All I'm going to do is put this in here, put thread my bolt down through the middle and uh, run that in this section just here. Put this card on the top and uh, put the washer on again and screw that down again. We'll tighten it up in a minute, but uh, this is gonna be the easiest way that I've seen to do this. So put all four arms on like that. Alrighty, so uh, here it is, and uh, you can definitely tell that it's taking shape, and now it's time to, uh, the arms are loosely in there, now it's time to actually put in the bolts that are gonna sort of hold it all together. So you're gonna have two of the, uh, two longer ones and two shorter ones. The two shorter ones are gonna screw into this part just here, and the ones at the back, they're actually gonna be used, we're gonna screw them in loosely, uh, because we're gonna actually be putting our receiver antennas through here, and that's what you're gonna be using, this little part right there to screw that down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in now. Ooh, so that's definitely looking uh, a lot nicer now. I've screwed those down. You can see it's all nice and tight, nice and firm. I uh, probably will do them up a little bit tighter towards the very end of the build. But now, uh, actually an exciting bit, what we're gonna do, we're gonna tidy up all this mess and all these wires that we're seeing right here. Now, uh, this part's pretty important because what we need to do, essentially we're gonna be cutting these wires and uh, soldering them up directly to these pads. So we've got the positive, the ground, and also the signal right here. So we're gonna be soldering those up for each of the ESC. Look, I've left my little ground wires on here, so you will notice I do have that little black wire, but some people don't like them on their builds, but I like to put them on just in case. Uh, so I'm going to be soldering up that black uh, just there to this ground as well. So I'm going to have two on there, the two grounds, the positive and the signal. So I'm going to do all that now. I'm going to cut them, uh, cut them, tin them, and then solder them up. Now, really, really important tip, make sure your wires 
are coming in from the middle on both sides. So this, this ESC will come in this way. This ESC, instead of going around the front, is going to come in here. And uh, this ESC, instead of coming from the back, is going to come this way. And what that's going to do, that's going to protect it in an impact if you're having a crash from the front. And also, that's the way your props spin. So your props might, they're coming around this way, they might clip into here somewhere, but there's no way the props are going to hit any of the wires if they're on this side in a crash. So that's a good little tip. Make sure that's the way you orientate your wires. So I'm going to cut to that and we'll have a look at what that looks like. Ooh, alrighty, so this is looking pretty good. Uh, let's plug it in and see if it's still working because that's always important. We want to make sure that we don't have any smoke at this stage in the build. I've checked it, it should be good. There we go. So all nice, ready to rock and roll and continue building. Now the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to get my LEDs wired up to this PDB as well as uh, some power for my, my VTX right here. So I'm going to do that. What the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take out this little part just here, take this off and uh, slide this bolt down a little bit because this pad right here, that's what we're going to be soldering to. So uh, this is the VTX wire that comes actually with your with your kit and I've made mine at about five centimeters. So that's how long that I'm going to use it and I find that's a good length in here and that's simply going to plug into the back of this. So what I'm going to do, same as always, I'm going to tin those right now and then solder them in just here. And you can actually see uh, one is marked ground and one is marked the voltage. And that's going to be whatever voltage you put in with your battery is going to what's, is going to be the same as what comes out of these two little pads just here. So I've just pre-tinned my wires. Let's solder them in. There's one. And there's two. All right, now let's move on to putting some wires in for our LEDs and soldering those up. Now the ESCs are very, very simple because they're well labeled on the back. You've got your data, five volt and ground. And uh, all we're gonna do is simply pre-tin these pads just here, or tin up these pads right here. I'll press that down actually. All right, and then uh, the, what you're gonna need is a wire, three wires actually. So I've got uh, three just here and they need to be about five and a half centimeters long. And so we're gonna hook one of those up. So you're gonna obviously put one for your data, one for your five volt and one for your ground. So I'm gonna make my ground blue because I don't think you actually get the, the wires that come with it in uh, some good wires inside the kit anyway. So I'm gonna make my voltage red and then uh, my data is going to be the, the white one right here now you do get two sets so do that to both of them and then uh, what I'm going to do I'm also going to uh, strip the ends just here and pre-tin the ends on there so alrighty and now it's time to hook our LEDs up here because I've got them just here and the way they simply go it goes ground 5 volt signal ground 5 volt signal now you don't have very much room in here so uh please make sure you're not bridging any of these solder joints and if you don't want to do these leds you don't have to put them on at all i'm going to put mine on but yeah so the process is ground five volt signal ground five volt signal just like that so there it is everything is soldered on here looking very very pretty now really what i recommend people do here is uh we're going to smash everything with some hot glue because there's a ton of little wires in here it's probably going to have a lot of vibrations so i'm going to cover each of these tiny little solder joints with a bit of hot glue just to give it that extra sort of rigidity and also just to make sure that it doesn't snap off and break Alrighty, so this is looking pretty good now. We've got all our glue on there. It's all looking nice and uh, nice and I guess honky dory, ready to rock and roll. What we're going to do now, I'm going to put my receiver in here. So that's very very easy. Uh, I'm simply going to just connect up the little the little cord that I soldered in last time. Make sure you get it around the right way. Uh, I can't remember which is which actually. Let's see. I think it's that way. There we go. And I'm going to run that this way just here. So I've got some double-sided tape so I'm simply just going to stick that down so I'm going to stick that down now and now's probably a good time too to bind it up to your radio so uh, if you need to do that make sure you bind this up to your radio as well now speaking of sticking things down what we're also going to do uh, is actually stick down some of these now these are our LEDs that we did before I'm simply going to twist them around a little bit to sort of neaten up those cables and then we're going to stick them on just here now what you can do we have this, uh, this is the, it's the part that I marked up before, but this is simply some of the sticky stuff that we use. So what I'm gonna do, this is actually pretty much perfect. So if you cut this along here, you're gonna get one nice long strip out of it, cut it in half, stick it on here, and you are ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna do that and then cut back. Now the next part we're up to, we're going to uh, be attaching some little spaces for our antenna. So you're going to get this little bit of antenna pipe right here. So I'm simply going to cut that in half. About there, it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, gee, it's a bit harder than I thought actually. Oh, there we go. 
and pretty much what's going what we're going to do we're going to bend that through here that's going to hold it hold its shape and this is where your antenna is actually going to run out so it's going to be out the back just here and keeping it nice and straight it's a little bit tricky actually so what i recommend people do we're going to have to actually heat this up with a heat gun i'm going to have to use a hair dryer because i don't have a heat gun and uh, that should make it much more malleable to try and bend in just here and the way i recommend to do that is to put one side in so we're going to put one so i'll put this side in actually see if i can slide that through and essentially i'm going to heat that up enough so i can bend it around and uh, push it back through this side and then when one side's in i can keep pulling it tighter and tighter so let's go with the hairdryer Alrighty, so here you can see after after a little bit of heating it up with my hair dryer and sort of forcing it into place, I was able to get this other loop through just here. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue to heat it up and slowly pull this side through so I have this part here should be extending out to about here. So I'm going to do that and then I'll cut back and show you what that looks like when it's completed. And then I'll also show you it. I'll also do it on the other side after that. Alrighty, so I've finished one of them after a little bit of gentle persuasion. You can see I've put my antenna wire through here as well and I've managed to get my pipe bent around and uh, it's right in there. So I'm going to do that to the other side and then I uh, will cut back and uh, move on with the build. Here it is, all looking very nice and pretty. Got my antennas safely secured at the back. Uh, and now it's pretty much time if you want to do anything with the firmware on here or anything like that, I recommend doing that. And also flashing and not flashing, also binding up your receiver because uh, once we put the top on, that's going to be a little bit harder to do. So what we're going to do now we're going to jump over and we're actually going to start working on our VTX side of things. And then the last step, all we have to do is put it together. Right, yeah, so uh, here it is. This is the VTX side of things. And this is very, very simple. Uh, you've got video, uh, positive and ground. So we're going to need to tin those up. Right here, this is a little jumper pad, but I'm simply just going to bridge that. But if you want to have the option where you can plug your quad in, uh, turn it on, but not turn your VTX on, you can put a little jumper on and that actually comes in the kit. But uh, if you feel like you're not going to use that, like I know I'm not going to, I'm just going to bridge those two over. And then just here on the back, uh, where are we looking at? Just here, we've got this little section where it says mic. Now, if you, there is three pads just here. If you bridge these two closest to the inside, I guess the middle and the inside one, uh, that's going to ground the audio. So you won't get any audio out of the mic that's on here. And if you uh, do want to use a microphone, bridge the outer one and the middle one. So bridge those two with a little bit of solder and that will enable the mic. Anyway, I'm going to uh, solder these up right now and then uh, we can continue with putting it into our quad. Now that that's all done, we're also going to screw in our little sort of pigtail extension right here or our little, little 45 degree angle, angle connector. Make sure that's down nice and tight. Uh, and we want that coming straight out the back because we're going to be zip tying this down a bit later in the build. Alrighty, and now it's time what we're going to do, now that that's all looking good, what I'm going to do, it's time to uh, make a little lead for our FPV camera. Now I'm going to be using the Runcam Swift, it's a fairly standard sort of camera, but uh, any of the HS 1177 sizes will fit in. Uh, so all I'm going to do, I think about five and a half centimeters should be plenty, so I'm going to say about that much. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit, uh, a little bit longer because you can always sort of tuck it in around under here. One of the reasons I do love Runcams is because they have silicon wire and it makes it so easy you can strip the ends with your fingernails. Uh, very, very nice wire to work with. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pre-tin those and then hook those up to my video positive and ground right here. And when you're soldering these in, uh, it might be tempting to solder it in this way, but you're gonna have these hard carbon plates pressed up right against the edges there. So I do recommend people solder it in sort of facing back towards the inside of the VTX. So I'm gonna solder that in right now. Alrighty, so that's looking good. And I'd probably hit this with a little bit of hot glue as well, just to make it that little bit extra secure. All right, so that's looking good. Now what we need to do, we need to take our press nuts and we're gonna do in the very, very same process we did it before, we need to actually get these press nuts pressed into the VTX. So uh, you actually get one of these little washers in the kit actually, which is probably what I should have used before. I'm gonna simply put that on here and screw my press nut down into that. And that's going to, uh, I'll show you how it's done, but that's gonna draw the, uh, the press nut down into the VTX. All right, so. As I tighten this, that should pull that nut all the way in here. All right, so you can see that's nicely in there. And then I'm simply gonna unscrew this and that press nut should stay in there. So there we go, repeat that to uh, all four of these, making sure the press nuts are going on the top. You don't want them underneath. So let's go through and do that on all of them. So put all four press nuts in. 
Alrighty, so that looks good. We've got all our press nuts in right here and what we need to do now before we can actually press it onto here We actually need to get out our file just for a little bit and we need to sand down or file down Just these little parts right here the edges of this so this can simply slide very easy over our press nuts and onto our VTX So I'm going to do that now sand those You don't need much filing So there's one. Now this is of course if you're using the GoPro mount because there's a couple of different mounts that come with it but uh, I want to record my flights when I'm flying around so I'm going to be using this GoPro mount. Radio. And then all that's simply going to happen is uh, we're just going to slide this part over here just like that. So you can see that fits very very nicely. Oh, I should just there, but there we go. Fitting perfectly over the top of those two little press nuts very very nice and snug in here so we want to do that to one of our sides this is also the point where i'm going to put each of these little standoffs in right here because uh you get a whole bunch of them in the pack so i'm going to put those in right now could be easy to put them on actually before maybe i should have put them on before but i'm going to put them in right now and now all we have to do is simply uh i'm going to plug my camera in right here i think that's uh let's see five volt ground and video so that's going to go on just there and uh, when we do want to put our camera in, it's simply going to go in just like that. So there we go. So that's uh, one one side of our little VTX combo done. We're getting very close to the end of the build, actually. Alrighty, so now that's done. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be simply installing my FPV camera. So I'm going to be screwing that in one of the sides just here. And that should slide over just like that. And I'll also attach my antenna now before I put this last little standoff in. Actually, I probably should have done that as well. So I'm going to do that. And then our pod is almost done. So there's one side, making sure too that your wires are going underneath these standoffs for your FPV camera. Alrighty, now I'm going to put my antenna on right here. So I'm using the Omway antenna, but uh, if I had an SMA Triumph antenna, I'd probably use one of those as well. So there we go, we've got that on. And now what I'm going to do, I'm uh, simply going to pretty much follow that same procedure and I'm going to install this side uh, on here, tighten up the standoffs, put the screws in and we should have our awesome little uh, top pod done. How easy was that? Alrighty, so I've pretty much got my pod made here. Now what we get to do, the exciting part is connecting it onto here. Now there's two little ports at the back. I've actually plugged mine in right here. So one of them, that's going to be the little power cables that we connect up before. That's going to slide right in. And then you're going to get this other little tiny one that actually comes pre-made ready to connect. So that's this uh, yellow, white, and uh, black one. That only goes around one way. And there's actually two ports it can go. Make sure it's plugging into the one at the back. So that's the correct one. And uh, here's a little note. If you check down in the description below, there'll be a way to flash the firmware. So I know in Australia, if you get this, you are limited to 25 milliwatts on this. But there is also a way to flash the firmware to unlock that to allow you to have sort of whatever VTX uh, power that you like. So uh, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide if you want to do that or not. But uh, now what we simply need to do, we're going to put through our these high tensile long bolts. We're going to slide on these thinner spaces. So these are these ones right here. They're a little bit taller than the fat short ones we used before. And then we're simply going to screw that down and uh, make sure that our pod is sitting nicely on top. Make sure when you do this that you don't have any little parts being pinched because you don't want any of these wires to be pinched. So make sure they're nice and clear of any of the standoffs or anything like that. And uh, then we are almost ready. Very exciting. Woo! Alrighty, it is looking good. I mean, look how good this thing is looking. Uh, you may have noticed, if you're very observant, uh, this is the time probably to focus your lens because once you put the rest of these standoffs in here, uh, it's actually going to be a little bit difficult. And I actually switched out my lens for a GoPro lens because uh, I, I actually prefer flying with these and I think it looks great. So uh, if you want to do that, now is definitely the time. But don't feel like you have to do that at all. It's still going to fly great even with this sort of standard lens. Now, uh, all I'm going to do, there's just a few more steps. I'm going to put these standoffs back in the middle there tighten those down uh, and then I'm going to zip tie what is very important I'm going to zip tie my antenna right here to this last standoff and that's going to make it so in any crashes all the pressure and all the uh, the force is going to be put onto the standoff instead of snapping off at the uh, SMA connector on the VTX so I'm going to go ahead and do that now Alrighty, now as far as the zip ties go, what we're going to need to do is like a crisscross pattern. So one coming across this way and the other going across that way. So two diagonals, so they're crossing over each other. And you're going to zip tie that nice and tight to this, this top standoff right here. Alrighty, almost there, so close. Now what we're going to do, we're going to flip it over. And just here on the bottom, this is where we're going to attach our little sort of 
this little pad right here and that is uh, all that's going to do is simply connect on and make our battery uh, nice and snug on here. So I'm going to pop out these middle bits in four and then we're going to peel off all this sticky part right here and that's simply going to sit nice and snug. There's only one way it can sort of fit on here anyway uh, on the base right there. All right. So let's press that down, hold that for a little bit. Now's the perfect time to put your battery strap in right here. So uh, you do get some battery straps with it. I'm gonna be using some of my UAV Futures Team Pilot battery straps. So I'm gonna be sliding those through. There we go. Very, very simple. Look at this, all right, almost there. All right, so our battery strap's on, we've zip tied it down. Now the last little bit of any bit you've missed with some hot glue, I'm probably gonna just dab on here. So like this little connector, these little connector parts, I'm gonna just gonna put a little bit of hot glue on the top, just there to help hold that in place. And uh, also on the back here, I saw uh, again on Crazy's video, he said uh, just to hot glue these down a little bit and give these a little bit of, not, not you're not gluing everything in, but just to give these a little bit of strength. I think he even used epoxy, but I'm, I'm not gonna go that far. But I do wanna alpha a little bit of strength in there, so I'll be putting some hot glue in. Now, I think all we have to do is put the props on. Now this is a pretty standard, straightforward process, but pretty much the, uh, the easiest way to describe it is that you're gonna have the blades always coming in to the center of the craft from the front and the back. So you've got your, what are these, clockwise and your counterclockwise. Actually, it should be around this way. So motors one and four, they're gonna be spinning clockwise and motors two and three, they're gonna be spinning counterclockwise. Now something I like about this frame, this is the, uh, the six inch version. So you can actually run a six inch frame as well as a five inch if you wanted to. So uh, over here you can see I've got this six inch, six inch prop and you can see just how massive that is. So that should be some insane power, but it's gonna chew your battery. And then over here, I guess, uh, here's one of the five inch props. So this is probably what I'm gonna run most of the time anyway. So I'm gonna probably put these ones on. And one last thing, uh, just before I forget, there's a little slit right here, excuse that sticker that's come off my buzzer, but this little slit right here, what you need to do, you're gonna be running a zip tie through there and just around your XT, your XT60 or your battery cord because that's gonna provide a little bit of strain relief in a hard crash. And if your battery does get jettisoned, it's just gonna pull on the, uh, on the zip tie instead of ripping the cord straight out of the board. So I'm gonna put that in now. And there it is. So uh, we are done. This thing is ready to rock and roll. Everything is finished. The props are on, it's tightened down and uh, it's time to go out and absolutely thrash with this thing because look how skinny this thing is gonna be going through the air. Look at that profile. And if you put some six inch props in here, man, this thing is gonna be fast. So there it is. There's my guide to how to build the Helix from Impulse RC. So I know some things can be a little bit tricky or it can look a little bit daunting, but congratulations because uh, you have built what, in my opinion, is one of the best quad copters out there at the moment. Uh, there is so much high tech stuff in here and uh, look at that profile. This thing is going to be absolutely like insane when you take it out and fly it around. Now I'm going to leave a couple of other guides down below. So I know a guy called Crazy FPV. He's got some and uh, he, I actually watched his in one of his build videos, but he also did one on how to flash the firmware on the VTX here. So just note that uh, if you do get the Australian version, it's limited to 25 milliwatts because that's what's legal here. And if you wanted to, uh, there's also the international firmware on the website and he goes through a guide on how to flash that onto your board. Anyway, I'll let you uh, think about that one a bit more. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with, uh, I guess, this thing's first hover, uh, but subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying. I think the funny, the funny thing about this hover was uh, I had a tiny little bit of hot glue sort of dangling off the side and it was only moving around when I decided to spin the props up. So uh, every time I'd spin the props up, I could see this tiny little faint glimmer of glue sort of spinning around, but I thought it was smoke coming out. So uh, I was checking it. I was actually a little bit nervous because it looked like smoke was coming out when I was arming the copter. And uh, then it would stop when I'd turn it off. And uh, finally, after some, some uh, maybe a tense 10 minutes of trying to figure out if anything was wrong, I gave it a bit of a hover and realized that it was just the glue sort of dwindling in the wind there. It was not releasing any smoke, which was a good sign. Anyway, enough rambling from me. Uh, happy flying. It's a bit of glue. I'm sure of it. Oh, it's this bit of glue waving around. Yeah. And I thought it was a bit of smoke. <laughs>